Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Tonight we have uh, a public hearing followed by a council meeting and then an in-camera meeting after. And I will begin by calling our public hearing to order for Monday, July 21st. And I'm gonna start by asking our corporate officer to please introduce the public hearing process and the first item on tonight's agenda. Uh, yes, Your Worship, the Local Government Act requires that a public hearing be held before a council adopts an amendment to the zoning bylaw or official community plan bylaw. Copies of the Director of Community Planning's reports and related information respecting the subject amendment bylaws have been available for public examination at the offices of the Planning Department in Parksville Civic and Technology Centre and on the City's website. At this public hearing, all persons who deem their interest in property affected by a proposed bylaw shall be afforded an opportunity to be heard on matters contained within the bylaw. Anyone wishing to be heard on a specific bylaw amendment must come to the microphone at the appropriate time and clearly give their name and civic address. The council members request that speakers restrict discussion to the application on hand, which is the proposed use of the land. Members of council may ask questions of persons after they have made their presentation. However, the main function of council members this evening is to listen to the presentations and not to engage in debate. Whether you are for or against any particular bylaw during the course of a public hearing, council would ask that you not display any outbursts as a courtesy to all present this evening. No presentations or submissions will be received by council on any application after the motion for termination of the public hearing for that application has been adopted. Lastly, when a public hearing item has been terminated, council requests those persons wishing to leave the council chamber do so in a quiet and orderly manner in order that the public hearing may commence with the next item on the agenda. The first item on the agenda this evening is Zoning and Development Amendment Bylaw 2014, number 2000.91. The purpose of the proposed amendment bylaw is to implement regulations to address the height of that portion of an accessory carriage house or single family dwelling with an accessory carriage house in proximity to a rear lot line and to establish minimum driveway access with the requirements. There have been no items of correspondence received in response to this bylaw. All right, thank you for that. So now I'm going to give opportunity for anyone who would like to speak to come forward to the microphone, state your name and civic address for the record, and then express your thoughts. So for those joining us uh, a little late, thank you, welcome for being here. Um, we're just in the middle of uh, the beginning of a public hearing and this is related to uh, ancillary use. Uh, sorry, could you go over that again? I'm just asking your corporate officer, just for the latecomers, in case there's somebody here that wishes to speak to it. Okay, your worship. Now that I put it away, okay. Just okay. the item. Okay, the purpose of the proposed uh, amendment bylaw is to implement regulations to address the height of that portion of an accessory carriage house or single family dwelling with an accessory carriage house in proximity to a rear lot line and to establish minimum driveway access with requirements. Thank you. So I've already made my first call out. I'm now on a second call out. For the second time, I'd like to invite anybody who wishes to speak to this item to come forward now. And for a third and final time, uh, is there anyone here who wishes to speak to this item? Please do so and come forward now. Okay, I don't see anyone coming forward, so I'm going to ask for a motion now to terminate the public hearing for Zoning and Development Amendment Bylaw 2014 number Hold on a second. Sir, you wish to speak to this item? All right, if you wouldn't mind, sir, just please come down to this table here, actually, uh, and uh, press the little button on this microphone if you can make your way through. <laughs> yeah, don't press there. So again, just uh, press the little red button. If you wouldn't mind stating your name and civic address for our records on the little unit there. Ah, thank you. There you much. go. 
Uh, my name is Doug Claston. I live on Wallace Street, 109, just a half a block over. Mr. Newport, how are you, sir? Um, the question is, is it three-story or four? You're talking roof gardens, aren't we? We're talking about uh, carriage houses and new restrictions that are being brought in uh, in regard to their placement. Well, um, I'm speaking on behalf of one of my neighbors who isn't here right now, really. I live on the other side, so it wouldn't affect me. But their concern is that if it gets to be that high, they're all looking down right into the houses right, right behind them. And their concern is the higher it gets, the more privacy you lose. So well, is it going to be three-story or four-story? Is it going to be roof gardens? What is the story? Okay, I'm going to ask our uh, Director of uh, Community Planning, our Acting Director of Community Planning, just to address that particular issue from a technical standpoint. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe you may be talking about the next item on the public hearing agenda, which is for the proposed rezoning on McMillan. I think this is just for... Does, your speaker, does your speaker work? Yeah. I believe you might be speaking to the next item, which is the apartment on McMillan. Are you talking in relation to the project on McMillan Street or yes, specifically yes. to Carriage House? On McMillan Street. Okay, that's the next item coming up. I didn't real because I'm late I didn't realize that. So I was okay. most glad to come back and I'm sorry I was out of out of pace. Not a problem. Uh, how many councillors are here today? I believe there's five of us present, sir, but uh, I'll tell you what, as soon as we get to this next item I will make a call out for anybody that well, wishes to speak to it. Thank you very much. No, I'm so sorry to have That's uh, okay. Steps. All right, thank have you. A good night. Okay, so it does appear that there are no speakers for this first item, and so I'm going to ask again for that motion to terminate the public hearing for Zoning and Development Amendment Bylaw 2014, number 2000.91, moved by Councillor Fave, seconded by Councillor Powell. And all in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. That item is terminated. I'm now going to ask our corporate officer to introduce uh, the second item on our public hearing agenda. Uh, yes, Your Worship. The second item on the agenda is Zoning and Development Amendment Bylaw 2014, Bylaw Number 2000.93. The purpose of the proposed bylaw is to amend the existing Comprehensive Development CD19 zone to allow for apartment use and to eliminate single-family dwelling use on those properties known as 103, 105, 111, 115, and 125 McMillan Street. There have been no items of correspondence received in response to this bylaw. All right, thank you for that. So now and I will, for the first time, invite anyone who wishes to speak to this item to come forward to the microphone here at the table, and uh, please state your name and address for the record. I see the little red lights already on, so you should be good to go. Okay, my name is Linda Chan, and I live at 220 West Island Highway, so the Waterford building that's just across the street, um, our, the back side of our building is on Morrison. And a question some of our residents have is on this, it doesn't state which way the traffic will flow, so ingress and egress, because um, if it's going to go on to Morrison, that's very close to Morrison-McMillan um, intersection, which already is um, a very busy corner or if the um, access to the apartment building will be off Macmillan Street. Do we have any of that information yet? I'll ask our uh, Acting Director of Community Planning to uh, address that from a technical standpoint, please. Thank you, Your Worship. The access is proposed to be on Can't Morrison. Can hear you? It's always here. Yeah. The access is proposed to be on Morrison. It's going to be on Morrison? Yes. So that's really close to that intersection. That could make it difficult for traffic, try to make a left turn, or traffic coming out of the apartments and being right there at the intersection. Is there going to be light, um, a street light added there or anything yet? That Go ahead if you want. Okay. There's no plans for a signalized intersection at this time there. Okay. No. But that'll be the only access is, okay. And you're aware it could be tight. And that is your concern, yeah. um, predominantly around traffic and access traffic, and egress. Traffic, access, safety. Okay, very okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for a second time, I'd like to ask anyone who wishes to speak to this item to please come forward. My question was, 
simple, is it? Just once again, if I could just ask for the record to make sure we have it, your name and civic address, please. Oh, it's uh, Doug Clausen, 109 Wallace Street. Uh, I back up uh, half a block away, and like I say, I have some concerns more for my neighbors than myself in the sense that uh, if it's four-story, it gets so high that people can look right down it at you at the back. And is it four-story or three-story? Are there roof gardens where people will be up there looking down all the time, or is it three stories? What, what is the story on this? Can I get some clarification from our acting director of community planning, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The zoning provides for a 16-meter height. Uh, the actual design and form and character of the building will be dealt with at a later date should council approve the application for rezoning but it would allow for a four-story apartment and there would be um, an ability to have rooftop gardens with that height of 16 and, meters. And that is above the fourth story? It would be, yes. Okay. Um, it's just that we have a bit of a concern, I'm sure. I'm glad we're a city that's growing and not shrinking. So uh, as a young fellow, I appreciate the fact that we have some good foresight going here. Um, I would like to also ask, why can there not be an access at one end close to the McMillan School so that there is a roundabout and it doesn't have to be just one entrance into the property, like the back lane? Right. Uh, I you don't know, this know would, if you'd be able to answer that from a technical standpoint, so go ahead. Uh, <coughs> that please. could allow for a one-way situation so that um, it isn't all clogged into one, a on Morris, one, one line on Morris, and would that be a possibility? If I may, Mr. Mayor, through you to the um, applicant here. Um, the property is rather constrained in terms of the width that is there, and the applicant and his engineer have indicated that this is the best access. Um, I believe I'll defer to our Director of Engineering, but we also have a bylaw that says where access is being provided, it should be off the street with the lower classification, which would be Morrison in this case. Um, so the applicant's designer has basically tried to maximize the density um, under that uh, provision um, so close to the downtown core and uh, basically hasn't uh, provided for double access. Okay, well, couldn't it be looked into to see if that would be a possibility? I may need to defer to the Director of Engineering on the bylaw. Anyway, thank you. That, that was our concern, and I'd like to mentioned to the city people here that you should tell your engineering department they've done a really, really fine job on that street. It's the best looking street in town. So somebody should say, great job. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're now at a third and final call for anyone who wishes to speak to this item to please come forward now. This will be your last opportunity, so if you do wish to speak to this item, uh, you can line up behind uh, this lady here. And ma'am, if you wouldn't mind stating your name and address for the record, please. My name is Dawn Ryan, and I live at 106 Wallace Street. And I wish to tell you all how this building would affect me, if it indeed it is going to be four stories. I live immediately behind the proposed building in about the middle. A building of four stories stretching from Morrison Avenue almost to Hearst Avenue would severely affect the amount of light I get in my backyard. Currently, since it faces east, my backyard enjoys the morning sun and that continues on till the afternoon. With the proposed building in place, I would be lucky to get an hour or two of sun. All of my backyard plantings would suffer. My bedroom is on the east side of my house with a large window looking out into my backyard. Macmillan Street and beyond. I can leave my curtains open most of the time, lucky me, to enjoy the branches of my fir tree silhouetted against the sky. I can watch the elm trees on Memorial Avenue as they first leaf out, green up, and then turn to their fall colors. With a tall apartment building, those views will be gone, and with 10-foot wide balconies lining the building overlooking me, I will have to live with my curtains mostly shut. I can't blame people for wanting to be out on their balconies looking at the sunset. I will be unable to even enjoy my backyard. I don't know anyone who would want a huge building virtually in their backyard, so the value of my modest little house will most certainly go down. Even if I could face the enormity of moving, I likely could not afford another house. I held out, had held out a forlorn hope. Excuse me. 
that what would be built would be single family dwellings already allowed under current zoning. If the zoning were ever to change, I had hoped that it would encompass, say, two story townhouses, which, in my opinion, are a much better transition from downtown business to residential. This change would allow an enormous apartment, this change to allow an enormous apartment complex is a complete and utter disaster for me and for the enjoyment and the value of my property. Thank you. Thank you. Please hold your applause, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're not allowed to applaud or even boo or anything at these public hearings. It means we don't want to intimidate other members in the crowd should they wish to speak. But I do not see any further speakers lining up for the microphone on this item, so I'm going to ask Council for a motion to terminate the public hearing for Zoning and Development Amendment Bylaw 2014, number 2000.93. Moved by Councillor Fave, seconded by Councillor Morrison. All those in favour? Opposed? And that's carried. I'm now going to ask for a mover and a seconder to adjourn our public hearing this evening.